Five days ago, 35-year-old radio broadcaster Richard Najid was shot dead by a still unidentified suspect in Tawi-Tawi. The incident happened a day after the observance of World Press Freedom Day. This was the most recent recorded media killing in the country. He was the 27th journalist in the country killed under the watch of President Benigno Aquino III. Still fresh in our minds was the gloomy day of November 23, 2009, when a mass grave was discovered in Mindanao amid heated political rivalry. 22 out of 58 bodies recovered were journalists. Dubbed as the Ampatuan or Magindanao Massacre, this is the single deadliest event for journalists in history. For four consecutive years, at least two foreign media watchdogs noted that the Philippines is the third most deadly country for journalists after war-torn countries of Syria and Iraq. This is ironic to the Philippines' image of upholding democracy and freedom which other countries try to follow. The so-called impunity aggravates the plight of journalists being killed in the line of duty. Courts are slow and justice remains elusive. Even during the visit of U.S. President Obama in the Philippines, a foreign journalist from Fox News asked President Aquino, A wide 26 journalists have been killed since you took office, and I understand that there have only been suspects arrested in six of those cases. What are you doing to fix that? We did set up a, an interagency committee to look on extra-legal killings, enforced disappearances, torture, and other grave violations of right to life, liberty, and security of persons. But with 27 recorded media killings since 2010, and police having arrested suspects in only six cases and secured convictions in only two cases, it looks like that the government has a lot of work to be done in order to convince the people that the safety of its people remains paramount. Welcome to Opposing Views, a hard, straightforward discussion of today's most pressing issues. Journalism has long been a high-risk profession in the Philippines, not only because of the dangerous places media practitioners cover, but because some believe that killing the messenger is the best way to suppress the message. The Philippines has a reputation for having one of the freest media freedom environments in Asia, but this seems to fleet inch by inch with every dead journalist added to the statistics. So tonight we ask, is the government fulfilling its mandate of protecting journalists. Good evening, I'm Rod Depomoceno, and this is Opposing Views. Joining us tonight in our discussion is Colonel Henry Libay from the Philippine National Police Directorate for Investigation and Detective Management. He also heads Task Force USIG. Good evening, Colonel. Colonel uh, Libay. Good evening, uh, Attorney Rod. Yeah, uh, can you give us a summary uh, of your uh, position regarding this question? Is the government uh, providing enough protection for our journalists? Yes, uh, actually, yes. Uh, the government is uh, doing uh, everything uh, in order to solve all of these uh, cases of Islam media uh, practitioner that is happening in our country today. All right. Uh, and on the opposing side is Mr. Ed Lingao, a veteran journalist and multimedia director of the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Attorney. Uh, thanks for joining us. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. All right. Um, what is your position on this, Ed? Uh, is, is the government providing enough protection? For well, the simple answer to that is no. Uh, but to, to put a bit of nuancing, we're not asking for protection. We're just asking for uh, the implementi implementation of the law. Uh, mm -hmm. We are asking for enforcement, arrests, convictions. Mm. All right. So, so let's start off. Now, no, Ed, I'll start off with you. Um, U.S.-based uh, watchdog, uh, Human Rights Watch, um, described the state of media freedom in the Philippines as precarious and something not safe, not strong and, and steady. Uh, do you agree? Yes. Uh, we have the freest, uh, we have, we're the, one of the most free uh, mm in terms of press freedom, but uh, mm -hmm. unfortunately, we're also the freest in terms of it's free to kill reporters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So that's yeah. the, the paradox of the entire situation. Mm -hmm. uh, we can say a lot of things, but we can get shot and nobody gets uh, hold up to jail. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the st statistics now, mm -hmm. we've never had a conviction of any mastermind. We're looking at masterminds. 
not mm-hmm. gunmen, mm-hmm. not uh, mm-hmm. accomplices or, mm-hmm. or people who are on the lookout, mm-hmm. but really masterminds because mm-hmm. that would, uh, we think, put a stop mm-hmm. or have a major impact. And do you see the trend worsening uh, as the years go on? Well, we try to look at the, st- the statistics from uh, the time of President Aquino, the first mm-hmm. Aquino, uh, FBR, mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, so on down the line. In the first 40 months, for example, uh, of uh, President uh, Benigno Aquino's uh, mm-hmm. administration, we've had 24, we listed 24 uh, mm-hmm. work-related murders. That's double mm-hmm. the number of work-related murders in the first 40 months mm-hmm. of President Arroyo. So it's significant. Mm-hmm. So that's a significant that's increase. Significant. It's, it's quite it's double. It's yeah. double. Mm-hmm. It's double. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, uh, it, uh, if you look at the, in total the statistics, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the time of President Arroyo, which mm-hmm. was nine years, uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty long. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. of course, you're also looking at the Tampatuan massacre, which uh, right. uh, where you had 32 reporters who were killed. Yeah, in one in one go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so one event. Yeah, yeah. So, so we had to we had to partition a bit uh, mm-hmm. the statistics to look at uh, them on on separate time frames. Mm, okay. Uh, do you agree, um, Colonel, on on the assessment of that U.S. watchdog? Na? Parang it's uh, the media freedom in the Philippines is, is precarious, not steady, uh, not strong. Um, uh, what, what can you say about that? Uh, well, uh, of course, if, if we're going to compare the statistics, it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's really quite some uh, discrepancy as far as the number is concerned. Mm. So there, there really, you admittedly, there, there is a lot more happening. Uh, no, I mean to say uh, uh, they were talking about uh, 24 uh, work-related cases mm-hmm. under mm-hmm. the present administration, but uh, uh, yeah, we know that we have 27 cases right now, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, it's only around 11 cases uh, can be considered as work-related, and mm. uh, 16 of those cases are uh, You're saying it's, can it's be considered as non-work-related. Non-working, meaning the like kataon yeah, lang, that which, they're, they're media yeah, practitioners. Which means uh, uh, the, the, motive, the motive, the reason why they were killed is not uh, uh, related to their job as media practitioner, but it can be attributed to some other motive, like personal motive, mm-hmm. uh, love triangle, land dispute. Mm-hmm. And uh, a robbery and so forth. So you're and saying so it's, it was just a coincidence that they were my media yes, practitioners, yes. so it, it wasn't it, work related. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, now, I think yes, the differences. I think the differences mm-hmm. uh, are sort of the differences in definitions. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Task Force Husig uh, has its own definition of when is a reporter mm-hmm. killed in line yeah. of duty, or yeah. uh, and we have we, we, we tend to uh, look at these killings uh, from a very con- uh, from a very liberal point of view. Mm-hmm. Uh, so long as there is so long as there is no uh, uh, the first thing that the, the media groups look at is um, does there seem to be any other motive for the killing of this reporter and if there is no clear motive mm-hmm. no other clear motive for the killing of the reporter mm-hmm. aside from his job then mm-hmm. we tend to lump them as a media related murder already mm-hmm. in other words uh, if it's not clear that it was you know a love triangle mm-hmm. or, so if it's big if yeah, it's big yeah. then, then we, it's... we assume and we think that it's a safe assumption that it, mm-hmm. it may be related to his work uh, and mm-hmm. then there's also a consultation with the, with the colleagues mm-hmm. um, I, I think as far as task force task force was is concerned, they, they tend to be a bit more conservative in mm. the way they define. For, for example, uh, I think uh, the Ampatuan massacre victims are not listed uh, as, uh, I think they're listed as collateral, uh, collateral damage victims. Uh, it's uh, not considered, in, uh, is that true? Uh, no, you, uh, you don't consider those as media killers? No, actually, uh, uh, we know that uh, this uh, media practitioner were, were working during that time that they mm. were killed. So it was in the line of duty. Yeah, yeah. it's a work-related case. It just separated from the statistic counted as a one incident for the better reason that because of the, it was handled by the National Investigation Task Force and uh, the, the magnitude as far as the number of suspects and the number of persons killed. Mm. Yeah, because in, in most of the, for example, on the 48 cases we have on uh, work-related cases, uh, most of them are one victim, one victim and one suspect. Now, on the case of the Maguindano massacre, that's, uh, we have a lot of victims and yes. we have a lot of accused. So, in order just not to mingle out the, the figures, uh, since it was handled by a... In other words, that's an extra, extraordinary yeah. situation, an extraordinary yeah. event, yes. and you, you, won't, you wouldn't count that as, as media no, killings? It, it, yeah, it's, it's media killing. So, if we have it on our statistic, that would be from 48 plus plus one, so it mm. would be 49 cases, or mm. we're, we're counting as part of the number of incidents is concerned. But uh, that's, a, that's one, yeah. that's considered as part one the number incident. of incidents is uh, concerned. Uh, victim. Yeah. Okay, uh, not, okay. Not, uh, no, the number of victims is, of course, a, a, a different figure, which we mm-hmm. also put in our report. Now, Colonel, uh, may I ask, uh, 
in, in your mind, uh, is protecting journalists a, a priority of the Aquino administration? Uh, yes. Obviously, yeah, yeah. yes, of course. Uh, in fact, the president issued the, this administrative order number 35 in uh, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, which calls for the creation of the interagency committee against uh, torture, extrajudicial killing, mm -hmm. uh, and for disappearance, and other grave uh, human rights violations. So, mm -hmm. Uh, this uh, interagency committee, which is composed of different, uh, different government agencies, is also patterned to the, uh, the way we handle this uh, trafficking, uh, trafficking in person cases, where it's all, there is also an interagency committee. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this AO35 uh, uh, pulls all these different agencies. We have the DOJ, we have the PNP, the NBI, mm -hmm. uh, and other government agencies to look into these uh, particular cases. Mm -hmm. so and is this a regular thing, agency coordination? Is this a one-off, or is it a continuous uh, coordination of all these agencies? Yeah, yeah. Not, only, not only on coordination, but the interagency committee uh, is also uh, creating uh, the so-called special investigation teams. Uh, mm, okay. These are headed by the uh, designated AO35 prosecutors, the NBI, the PNP, and mm. other government agencies that may be called upon mm. to look on these particular cases. Uh, what, would, what, uh, what the good thing about this new setup is, um, under this particular setup, uh, the leader or the head of this uh, investigation team are the prosecutor mm. who are now part of the uh, capacity buildup in the investigation of cases, not, mm. not the ordinary cases where the prosecutor just determined the probable cause. Mm. This, this time, one. they are the ones who lead and they are the, the head of the investigation team, mm -hmm. and they go side by side with the police and the NBI to conduct investigation. Mm. So this is, the, this mm. is a new setup. Yeah. So, Ed, are you familiar with this interagency coordination? Yes, and if so, um, are you well, actually are you supporting? I've talked already with, uh, with mm -hmm. the Colonel about this. And to, to be fair to Task Force USIG, uh, they've, done, uh, they've had significant advances in the mm -hmm. way investigation is being done. Uh, yeah. We've looked at how they've improved and modernized uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the investigation procedures. When I started out as a reporter, I was a police reporter mm -hmm. 24, 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don't age yourself. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, You've been around. Uh, people would just go in and out mm. of the, the crime scene, and now mm. there's there's more order, and uh, you know there's uh, uh, there's uh, mm -hmm. ballistics, there's uh, fingerprinting, yeah. that that we appreciate. Um, however, uh, I need to also bring this to a boots on the ground level. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, when you go to uh, the provincial level, to the the local police, mm -hmm. uh, they still have the, the most basic problems. Um, they would have four uh, investigators handling mm -hmm. everything from traffic violations to to awen mm -hmm. uh, na dapat mm -hmm. sa barangay to murder mm -hmm. to media murders mm -hmm. to to rape so uh, halo, halo, no, halo. overpowering yeah, yeah. Uh, so so you, you so would have things. a lot of issues there na dikit dikit eh. even though you have task force susig and you know um, there have been improvements na along the line um, it will take a lot of time for it it's to more metro down. manila it's more uh, you're saying is it more the task for usig is more city centered rather well, it than it can be felt than, more oh. strongly here in metro manila than, than in the provinces for example kabalatuan is a highly urbanized city mm. yet when you talk to people there the, the investigators there uh, regarding a task force usig case mm. of a media murder yeah um, he wasn't very familiar with the case even though he was handling that case as a task force usig case which is which makes it uh, one of the priorities mm. uh, he didn't know uh, how many shots were fired? Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't know if the the slugs were recovered, mm -hmm. and he was the investigator uh, mm -hmm. assigned to the case. And I, I really can't blame him that much then, because uh, uh, in the end, these guys they, they work twenty four hours. Uh, yeah. It's it's just a bandwidth. Cause they they can't yeah. phys physically. I, I don't mean twenty four yeah. hours a day. Right. I mean. Yeah. 24 hour shifts. Yeah, shifts. So, oh. so from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning the next day. Yeah, they're, they're on it. Yeah, and they're on by, the by after 12 hours, how will you be able to think? <laughs> right, <clearly>. right. <laughs> now, 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 let's go, uh, Colonel, let's go back again to my question earlier. Now. President Aquino said that there are other issues why journalists are, are, are killed um, and not really in the line of duty. You mentioned that. Uh, does, it, does this mean we have? Um, let's say bloated or maybe vague statistics, not not bloated, but vague statistics. So um, yeah. how does that work? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, yung uh, sinasabi nga that was uh, mentioned by Ed, it could be uh, some kind of a different perspective and uh, definition. Mm -hmm. But uh, actually, as far as the sure. PNP concern, 
Uh, if, if we were going to read Section 24C of the Republic Act 6975, which is the PNP law, mm -hmm. the PNP is the primary law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. And one of our primary function is to investigate all crimes. Mm. And this includes all killing and uh, mm -hmm. cases of... Media killing. or not. Yes. Media or media not. not. Yes. I mean, yes. it's, uh, mm. I mean it's, it's, it's settled there. So, mm. uh, yung sinasabi ni Ed na, uh, yeah, yung, yung kakulangan natin ng uh, something like manpower to do on the investigation. That's why uh, the chief PNP, when he assumed uh, the chief PNP, uh, the, the first directive that we got is to really focus on strengthening the mm -hmm. investigation at in in these different cases uh, of killings of media practitioner uh nagpo-form kami ng tinatawag na we form this so called special investigation task group at the provincial level mm -hmm. because uh, this is a special case and uh, we feel that we need to pull our manpower mm -hmm. uh, different pnp units so if it's a, if it's a media person affected you really Big form, special, yeah, a, a special, special, a special, special investigation task, force, task yeah. group, and, yeah. and, and this, yeah. and the, on this special investigation task group, we converge different PNP units at the provincial level. These are headed by the provincial director. Mm -hmm. uh, the CIDG is joining as part of the team, the crime laboratory, the intelligence group, mm -hmm. and the, okay. uh, so they converge just to focus on this particular case, mm -hmm. you know, just to solve that problem in as far as man, mm -hmm. manpower. That's why we are we are constantly training. Mm -hmm. We're embarking into a massive training to train yeah. our people, particularly mm -hmm. in... Uh, in Colonel, so, sorry to interrupt you. We need to take a short break. And uh, meanwhile, you, you can react online uh, via Facebook at facebook.com slash solar opposing views or tweet your comments at opposing underscore views. Use the hashtag OV Media Killings. Stay tuned. You're watching Opposing Views. We'll be right back. sila equalizer de ba kung bago parang sila yung uh, catalyst dun sa mga issues so madalas ang kabanggan nila authoritarian so hindi sila guaranteed na papoprotektahan kapag may nababangga rin sila authority hindi kayo ang mata kayo na kakita na mga katiwala nito dito sa ano na nangyari sa bayan think no kasi this past few years ang daming mga unresolved na mass media killing so i think hindi pa siya safe Welcome back. You're still watching Opposing Views on the Solar News Channel. We have with us Colonel Henry Libay of the Task Force Usig and Ed Lingao from the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. And our debate question for tonight is, is the government fulfilling its mandate of protecting journalists? Now, um, uh, Colonel, do, do you believe that the, the government um, is... Um, should I say, doing whatever it can. I mean, and I'll follow up a question with, with you, uh, Ed. No? Um, I mean, providing enough resources, at least, for, for, you, uh, for you guys. Because we were talking about uh, it offline, uh, and, and Ed uh, was mentioning that uh, earlier, that uh, basically, nangyari, uh, you have the same number of resources, but you're just reassigning uh, certain people from uh, particular task and, and putting them in, in this task force. Uh, do, you, do you think that the government is providing you with sufficient resources to, to address the, the media killings? That, that's, that's actually the very reason, uh, I think, why the uh, AO35 was uh, formulated, mm -hmm. uh, particularly to mm -hmm. pull uh, the coordination and the resources and manpower of different agencies and uh, particularly on, mm -hmm. on the PNP. Mm. So, okay. Now, uh, yeah, do you think do you think the government is apathetic to to the plights of the the press and in well, protecting press freedom? You can look at it from several levels. Maybe because uh, they're being hit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can look at it from several levels. For example, the president uh, himself. Mm. Uh, we we have had some issues with the president himself as mm. far as his attitude towards the media is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, what is his attitude? You well, if you if you go by his pronouncements and by his criticisms to the media. Uh, which is, of course, uh, 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 which is allowed mm. uh, because everybody's allowed to hit the media if they want. Uh, yeah. no, speaking about the media, um, he's become very critical of the media 
uh, and in fact, in just one, in, for example, I think it's 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, in four separate uh, public uh, speeches, he hit the media. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. Now, now, while that that is allowed and understood, uh, and you know, it's allowed of anybody to do that. Mm -hmm. Here, you're talking about the the highest uh, official of the land, the the, the chief executive, mm -hmm. and that would have a significant. Uh, mm, uh, Echoes mm -hmm. uh, down the local government chain. Right, right. Uh, if your chief executive says that the media is abusive and mm -hmm. that the media is uh, uh, is uh, overstepping its bounds mm -hmm. and is too critical, mm -hmm. what will your mayor say? In a way, it gives it say? gives an impression. It yeah. gives an impression of what the position of the head, of the central government is. Uh, and, has, yeah, uh, yeah. To the to media, right? Or even his personal position. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, the president. We don't think well, the president is yeah. not uh, involved in any of the, uh, the media murders. Yeah. However, his statements carry a lot of weight, mm -hmm. and it, okay. it, uh, we think that it, it adds to the problem. Mm -hmm. Do you think that adds to the problem, uh, Colonel? Uh, yung attitude to the president, um, you know, a bit, um, a little, you know, he castigates the, the media practitioners, and, um, and therefore, uh, as, 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 as Ed mentioned, no, it, it trickles uh, down to the mga local government uh, mm. uh, executives. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think so because uh, if you're going to uh, follow the news, every mm. time that uh, there was a media practitioner who were killed, even the Malacanang always gave us a marching order to solve every case that we have. Mm. Okay. In other words, they, pray, they, they would uh, not ignore it and, yes, and, and really course. go all out and, and give a statement on, on yes. what action to be made. All right. But uh, a, a, great yeah. deal of, a great deal of the murders of media are well, the suspects mm. are usually people from the local government uh, unit, the local government level, and fr these are a lot of these are from areas which are, uh, you know, which you might you might consider as fiefdoms or little kingdoms, mm. right, uh, right. semi-autonomous in a sense from Manila. Mm -hmm. um, they, they they are far away from the reach and mm -hmm. from the sight of uh, the national government, mm -hmm. uh, yet they have the, the authority that comes with the being local government officials. Mm -hmm. So, may, 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 ka, may ka kabit siya na ano eh. Mm -hmm. Kahit hindi diretsahan, mm -hmm. uh, it has an impact. It right. has an effect. Now, now um, let's go to the, the processes um, and the progress in resolving these cases. Now, the, the cases are, are there. We, know, we all know that. Are, are you satisfied, Ed, with uh, how this uh, resolving of all of these cases uh, have progressed and, and also you're looking at phase. several levels yeah. uh, on the investigation part uh, there's still a lot that has to be done uh, we but we do acknowledge that uh, there has already been a lot done mm -hmm. a lot of improvements in modernizing the investigative capa capacity of the, the police Pero marami pang gawin. Mm -hmm. uh, for example like what we mentioned a while ago um, we've succeeded in the channeling or mm -hmm. repurposing personnel mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't really um, beefed up the personnel itself, the, the, mm -hmm. the numbers. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We still have one of the lowest uh, mm -hmm. police to, to civilian ratio uh, mm -hmm. in the region. Right? Mm -hmm. we, we could still improve on that. And that would have a significant impact on how you're able to, to investigate. You know, that. And um, then, of course, the judicial portion part. Yeah. The judicial, the judicial also, part. a lot of the major murders remain unresolved because they never got beyond the investigation phase. Mm -hmm. Patay ng, patay ng victim, patay pa ang kaso. Hindi mm -hmm. na umusad from the police investigation Case in point, the uh, Ampatuan... Uh, the Ampatuan, may movement nga, umabot sa korte. Oh, okay. a, a lot of the cases of major murders never even got to the piscal. Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. even got to the, the courts. Mm -hmm. Kasi, well, siguro, nahihirapan magarap ng witness, nahihirapan mag 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 ebidensya, mm -hmm. or hindi natin ma maigi yung evidence. So, dun pa lang, going up, Mm -hmm. Next level one, one is the court. Mm -hmm. Kung hindi maganda rin ang pagkakakalap ng ebidensya mo, then mm -hmm. that will also affect the length right. of the trial yeah. and the, the and result of the trial. Of course, the, the, the period uh, as to how long it's going to be resolved. So, tahi-tahi. Yeah. Kabit-kabit yeah, 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 yeah. siya Now, uh, Colonel, um, is the growing uh, backlog no, uh, in filing cases of media killings? And I see a lot of the, the facts here and the stats. No? It's, it's, it's bothersome, no? Uh, do you think the growing backlog in filing cases of media killings is because of police investigators assigned to, to gather the evidence, to process the witnesses, and build cases against both the gunmen and the mastermind? Is, it, is the backlog because of the slowness of the investigation? Uh, I, I don't think so because uh, there's, there's a lot of factors to be considered mm -hmm. there. Now, if you're speaking about training, mm -hmm. uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have actually trained around... Uh, uh, 12,000 investigators so far nationwide. Mm -hmm. Before, when we start, uh, it's only around 25% of them were 
are formally trained, and now we have 80% eighty percent. Eighty percent are fully trained. Are fully to trained, gather, and they were still yeah. conducting a massive formal training. investigation. Yeah. Uh, Specifically also, for media killings. Uh, I mean, uh, that I is for the for, for the yeah. for the overall. But there is also uh, specialized co courses mm -hmm. uh, that we are offering, not only to our. Uh, uh, police non commission officer, but also to officers mm -hmm. who will be managing each, each and every one uh, cases that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we're continually uh, improving our forensic capability. Before, you won't heard of that CCTV, digital forensic, mm -hmm. uh, computerized uh, mm -hmm. composite sketch, uh, ballistic examinations, and so forth and so on. But now this has become a uh, very familiar every now and then because in the advent of this uh, mm -hmm. new Totoo technology that is mm -hmm. coming in, mm -hmm. that is we're, talagang drawing lang yes, drawing lang. Oh. We're, we're improving our systems and uh, procedures, mm -hmm. our manuals, uh, together with the training in order mm -hmm. to enhance our capability and knowledge. On mm -hmm. So your position is basically it's not it's not in the hands of the police investigations. That's why there's a backlog. There's a lot of reason why. Uh, why uh, I mean, uh, sometimes of course you mentioned about uh, witnesses. Sometimes the family are no longer interested to, mm -hmm. to pursue, pursue the case. Uh, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if, 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 if I remember right, we have five cases, for example, of dismissed cases and. Uh, if you're going to look at that, is, mm -hmm. uh, the only one of those dismissed cases can be attributed to the insufficiency of evidence. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, now, um, and let's go to the statistics. No? Um, a f few suspects um, are in, in jail, uh, and uh, there are a few cases in court. Uh, I, I see the stats here. Yeah. And uh, the conviction rate is, is quite low. No? Um, so do you believe that there's... Um, I don't know, impunity in the country, yung talagang walang justicia. So, clearly, um, you know. clearly there is. Hindi ko naman sasabing walang justicia, pero yeah. very limited yung, yung mm. implementation ng justicia. Yeah. Now, uh, if you look at the statistics, yung mm. conviction rates, for example, mm. uh, you're looking at what? Uh, around 10 convictions, but they're all uh, gunmen or mm -hmm. mga, no mastermind at all. Mm -hmm. In the end, what you want to go after is the mastermind because he's mm -hmm. the person who ordered the killing. Mm -hmm. The gunman is the arm. Mm -hmm. The brains okay. oh. are still floating around. Yeah. And the brains He's never had yeah. Yeah. a conviction of a, of a, well, a mastermind. mastermind. Yeah. Or even an arrest. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a good case that, that we always cite, the Marlene Esperat case. Uh, Marlene Esperat was, was a radio broadcaster and columnist in Sultan Kodrat. She was killed. Uh, uh, in 2004 or 2005, na-identify ang kanyang mga masterminds mm -hmm. dahil the gunmen and the lookouts were convicted and one of them turned state witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So na-identify yung masterminds. They turned out to be two senior Department of Agriculture officials. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they were able to, mm. and this goes to another part of the problem of impunity, yeah. uh, they were able to play around with the law, with the legal system. Mm -hmm. So they were able to delay everything, right. and until now, hindi sila ma-arresto. And they're still mm. holding office. Right, right, they're right. still in office. Yes. They're still yeah. getting paid taxpayers' so that, money. Mm -hmm. So but they've been identified as the, as the, as the masterminds. Mm. So, Why uh, the people convicted? Yeah, Colonel, uh, do you agree with, uh, with Ed here that uh, it's just purely the, the gunmen na huli, walang mga masterminds na... Na, uh, na, 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 na convict or uh, not much even arrested? Uh, I, 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 no, uh -huh. of course. Uh, if you're going to focus on this, uh, the one that is highly sensational, that is believed to be work related, for example, we can mention the Jerry Ortega case, although we have identified already the mastermind, but still they are at large, mm -hmm. of course. But mm -hmm. So yep. you, you, there are cases where the mastermind is identified? Yeah, it, oh. especially in the, on those cases that we mm -hmm. considered as uh, non-work related because it's, it's much more easier to solve than the, the one mm -hmm. that is uh, work related. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give an example. For example, we have a case in, uh, in Aurora. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want mention it, but mm -hmm. I know Ed knows that yeah. there is a mastermind that was identified there, who was arrested. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that the, the family of the victims uh, executed an assistance, and that is the reason why uh, the case against him was dropped. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the yeah. families and victims means because you know, they know yeah. they, it'll take a long time for justice to be given to them. But I'll cite, cite another case. In, in General Santos City, um, the Dennis Cuesta case, um, he, he's a radio broadcaster, was shot several years ago. Mm -hmm. um, the alleged mastermind happens to be a police official. Mm -hmm. uh, I police won't mention his name anymore, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, but he's a police official who's on the wanted list uh, and he hasn't been found yet for several mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you'd come across reports that he's been se seen around General Santos City mm -hmm. because he belongs to, the fa to a political family there. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. 
So, so may mga ganun. So, may mga ganun uh, instances. May mga ganun. Now, now uh, on your part, no, Ed, being a media practitioner, uh, um, and uh, you might have, I don't know if you have statistics for this, but, but if, if, uh, if a media practitioner, for example, feels that his life is threatened, and he report and he reports it to the police. I don't know if you have stats for for, for that. Yung mm-hmm. parang reported threats, uh, which uh, I guess eventually led to him being being killed anyway. Because I would imagine that you know if a person, if a media practitioner says, "Oh, I'm being threatened. I'm being threatened. My life is being threatened," and yet he dies, uh, there was there was probably a, a lack of uh, protection there. No, we can we can argue. So, yeah. do we have stats for that? Or? No, unfortunately, we don't. Because uh, you know. It, you're, you're yeah. looking at such a varied uh, amount of and a number of uh, people who work in the media, yeah. and a lot of them, some of them complain, some of them don't. A lot of them actually don't bother to complain don't anymore because it's part uh, of the job. But that's, yeah, but that's part of uh, what we've been trying to instill among fellow reporters is that if you are under threat, you report it. Report it right away. You now, make uh, it public. Colonel Kayuba, you get you do you get a lot of media people coming to you and saying, oh, "My life's being threatened. Please protect me." Yeah. And, and what do you do in those instances? Yes, actually. Uh, 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 we, we also have those people who are really seeking and uh, report to the police. So you do have um, yes, media yes, practitioners. Account. Yes. And, and what uh, do you do? What do you do specifically? Of course, uh, action, to answer the question of whether the the, poli- uh, the government is really protecting. Of course, we're, we're providing them security protection. But mm-hmm. there are some, some cases that the, the media practitioner mm-hmm. itself don't want to be escorted mm-hmm. by PNP. So mm-hmm. what what the what the PNP is doing is a uh, regular mobile uh, patrol in the area mm-hmm. because the, the media practitioner sometimes uh, uh, disagree to have mm-hmm. uh, escort for them. Let me yeah. also put some context yes. into that. Yeah. Um, uh, like I said, Kanina, we're not actually really asking for you know for protection, special protection for the police. Because we need them to use special show away. I mean, uh, we, we we have as much a uh, right to life as everybody else, mm-hmm. diba? So we're not looking for special protection unless you've mm-hmm. really been threatened. Yeah. Uh, so there are some reporters and some media people who have asked for protection from mm-hmm. the police, and they've been given. Uh, Curiously, though, there are some uh, media people who really don't need the protection, mm-hmm. but they get protection from the police. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, oh, okay. there are those. There are those who don't. Means that they abused them from okay. from the end. Of so the that's, the, oh, that's the opposite yeah. so, spectrum. So, the man. So, 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 no, uh, okay. Now I'll I'll go into the context as you mentioned earlier. No, so sometimes you know you might have a media killing, and uh, but do you take into consideration if he had enemies? Because there are some media people uh, who don't go out there and really uh, bash, let's say, politicians. They're just ordinary, I guess, uh, hosts or DJs. Yung you take into consideration uh, when you investigate? Do you take into consideration what this person was? Was saying on air or what was what what this person was writing? Yes, precisely. That is actually mm-hmm. the manner of approach how we mm-hmm. investigate cases. No, mm-hmm. uh, ng, that was uh, what was mentioned by uh, Ed a while ago. Uh, uh, we look into we re- we review the program all of his write up mm-hmm. and uh, try to un- that if he's a hard hitting commentator, particularly discussing hard hitting mm-hmm. issues for. Uh, let's say local politician or other government uh, officials. Mm-hmm. We look into this, into this. We review this program, all of his write up and uh, and. Uh, so in the yeah, you yes, evaluate and, 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 and it. Ed, if yeah. there is no other clear uh, reason why he was killed, mm. we we assume it is a work related cases. Okay, but if if let's say that he wasn't really writing anything derogatory to anyone and then he got killed then do you write that off at as not a media killing not well, not, not media killing uh, not media related well actually uh, gaya ng sinabi ko kanina uh, the PNP investigate all crimes oh, okay. uh, particularly if that is involves a media man we always create this special investigation task regardless of what is the motive is yeah you know. uh, but i guess it's it's more finding out the trend no? whether there, there is indeed a, a trend for people to uh, really just, you know, if someone speaks ill of them, they, they, they shoot and, and kill. So I guess we're trying to find out whether the statistics are, are yes. reliable or not, no? in, in determining a trend, so to speak. But uh, we need to take a, a short break, uh, Colonel and Ed. Uh, don't go away. When we come back, the result of our online poll on the issue and the final words of our guests. Stay tuned. You're watching Opposing Views.
Welcome back. This is Opposing Views. I'm Rod Depomoceno and our guests are Colonel Henry Libay from the Philippine National Police Directorate for Investigation and Detective Management. He also heads the Task Force USIG and Ed Lingao, journalist uh, from the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. And our question for tonight, is the government fulfilling its mandate of protecting journalists? Now, uh, we have a question. Um, will licensing uh, journalists, no? licensing journalists guarantee more protection of of, of media personnel as, as proposed by Senator Estrada yung, to, to license them. Do you think that uh, that, will, uh, that will help? Li licensing uh, media practitioners? Yeah, licensing. Well, uh, in the same way that, uh, I guess, uh, uh, lawyers are licensed and... and yeah. then, uh, well, I think, and, I think yeah, because uh, uh, I've, been, I, I've been in discussion with a lot of media groups and uh, mm -hmm. they, they have mm -hmm. this so-called... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Group? Ha I mean, I've been in a discussion in a different forum with various media organizations, mm -hmm. and even the old uh, professional reporters, they also mentioned the so-called how, uh, how, how how uh, mm -hmm. media practitioner, and uh, they always mention about uh, policing uh, mm -hmm. their own rank. Mm -hmm. uh, just recently, uh, I think NPC is cleansing uh, right now their mm -hmm. own their rank. Next, oh. uh, uh, yeah, even. Mm -hmm. Uh, and just just to make sure that they have this so-called uh, the real media practice. Real media do you th so do you think licensing would help? Licensing uh, the media practice? Yeah, well? yeah, I, I yeah. think so. Yeah, that mm -hmm. would make them more uh, professional in mm -hmm. uh, in some way, mm -hmm. and at the same time, uh, we could subject have, to certain code of ethics and a uh, certain and, code and, of and, ethics and, and uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 be, be able to know who, who mm. were actually are mm. the real uh, the real media practitioner and the right. real journalists in this country. Ed, Ed, you think uh, we should be licensing well, media practitioners? Let me put it this way. Kung ang bulag nga kaya gumawa ng lisensya sa LTO, mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would stop <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what okay. stop, uh, uh, people to just have a, a fake yeah. uh, license. If the problem is uh, reporters who do not have uh, the ethical values mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. a, 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 a very well formed value system which would tell them what is right and what is wrong, mm -hmm. if, if that is the problem, then that that should be you know um, mm -hmm. that should be an in, an internal you know. Um, the, there, there, you have to leave it to the media mm -hmm. to police itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the reason I said this is, is this. Eh? In the end, the fourth estate, the media, is supposed mm -hmm. to be independent, completely independent from the, from the of state. government. Mm -hmm. if you it has have to be. A yeah. yeah, if you have a situation where government starts licensing media, then in the end, after a few years, you will have media mm -hmm. just agreeing with the government. Mm -hmm. you can, the the government the, can use the licensing that is the way the it licensing, is. I know, no, to, uh, licensing, licensing requirement mm -hmm. to... to to, in a way, prevent yeah. you from... from Which is not to say that there are no problems in, in media. Mm -hmm. uh, we acknowledge that there are a lot of problems in media mm -hmm. as far as professionalism, mm -hmm. ethics is concerned. In the same way that there are a lot of problems, for example, with police, mm -hmm. lawyers, mm -hmm. army, politicians. Yes. But, it, but in the same way that you do not uh, condone the killing of politicians mm -hmm. uh, because there's corruption in, in the ranks of politicians, uh, same thing with the same with thing the, with reporters. With the, with the you have a problem with the reporter, you complain to his editor, or you complain mm -hmm. to the Philippine Press Institute, or you complain mm -hmm. to the KBP. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't just yeah. shoot him. Right. Because if you did that, then how many politicians would you have left? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Diba? Okay. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but usually, and I've, 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 I've spoken to some people, and uh, some of their concerns really is that because you know, if you have an uncontrolled media, and then parang some of them, I'm not saying all, mm -hmm. but some of them are saying, well, he kind of asked for it. You know, yeah, if we you would hear that all times. You know, he asked for it. He was he was berating someone, and uh, you know, some 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 people just blow off his re ruining my reputation, which is all I really have. Really, that's the most important thing, my reputation. Yeah. And, but one last, uh, still on this topic, um, there's also the misconception that you know the, the problem is the the how shall. Mm -hmm. uh, although we hear it a lot of times and sometimes we laugh about it among mm -hmm. ourselves kasi makita mo lalaki na mga ID tapos puro media media yung nandito media dito. Hindi sila yung problema mismo eh. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kasi you will come across some reporters who belong to reputable agencies, mm -hmm. who, mm -hmm. who receive regular salaries, who are actually very well known, mm -hmm. who have ethical issues, mm -hmm. who have problems with you know, everything from payola to unprofessionalism, except that you don't notice them as much because they do it more quietly. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. So, so okay. hindi siya yung dahil mukha siyang how siyao, ibig sabihin mm -hmm. eh. Yeah. Yeah. Problema. Hindi. Actually, I would usually yeah. refer back to the problem to Manila. Mm. Some of the bigger problems in the media belong in Manila. Right, exactly. Because of the example that we set. 
All right, I'm going to ask you this, and I'm going to ask also Colonel uh, Ed. Uh, do, do you agree that we should arm journalists to protect no. themselves? No. Uh, some, peop some reporters can't even write, and now you expect them to shoot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I don't know if I should have said that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, uh -huh. that's not their job. Uh -huh. uh, in uh -huh. the same way that you don't arm lawyers uh, uh -huh. just because they're lawyers, or you don't arm politicians just because they're politicians. Uh -huh. No, you arm the, you're not even supposed to arm them. I mean, do you give, do, maybe the question should be, should you give them, mm. allow them looser yeah. licensing yeah. requirements? Yeah. Uh, that's a different matter altogether. Mm. That, 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 for example, that, that question came about uh, nung Jerry Ortega murder. Mm. See, si, si Mayor Hagedorn said, uh, and if you want, I'm willing to arm the local media. And some reporters like the idea, mm. but we said, no, that's a bad idea. Yeah, because not only is the pen mightier than the sword, now I have a gun too, right? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Colonel, do you, what do you think of yeah. that? Arming uh, uh, mga pol, uh, mga uh, media? I, I also right. don't agree on that. You know, you also although, don't agree. Although right. applying for a gun, gun license, is of course, of course uh, would require you to satisfy some of the requirements if you are qualified. Mm. Hmm. But arming them, uh, totally, I also don't agree that uh, mm. what, what we can do is... Uh, perhaps uh, to educate them on personal security protection, yeah. mm -hmm. make them yeah. more a much more hard, hard target, how mm -hmm. to protect themselves. And to be, yeah, to be more vigilant. Yeah, yeah more yeah, vigilant, yeah, yeah. to be aware of their environment right. when they get out from their home, when they get out from their office and return to their home. Mm -hmm. how and do you conduct seminars like that to media practitioners? Yeah, or are they even interested? Or? Yes, actually, we, we even launched the so-called uh, personal uh, security information uh, drivers. protection handbook, a small handbook which contains uh, the, the procedure and how to uh, protect yourself in case of uh, there are prank calls, there are people, uh, I mean, you are under surveillance and so forth and so on. Uh, and we even conducted uh, mm. seminars to mm -hmm. a lot of uh, media groups and even uh, some target uh, shooting also. Yeah. But those, for those media men, of course, who or, have or, their or own license to license. Another qualified. Now, yeah. um, okay, I'm going to ask you this and I'm going to ask Ed this as we wind down uh, the show and the discussion. Um, Task Force USIG was established uh, to protect journalists, you know, uh, making sure uh, their, their cases are being processed. Now, uh, how, how would you assess it? Uh, how would you, uh, being the head secretariat, and uh, I'll ask Ed the same question, how would you assess uh, Task Force USIG so far? Is it successful? Or do you think, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you, uh, you'd like to take the liberty of, of ra rating it from, from 1 to 10, 10 being the best. I, I don't know if, or, or just make a general assessment. Uh, well, what do you think, uh, uh, I think uh, the, 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 the better to assess us is the, the people who are mm -hmm. the very person we were serving because uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the media groups. But uh, I, I can all, now, now we work under the interagency mm -hmm. committee, of course. But uh, what I can say is uh, uh, if someone was killed, mm -hmm. uh, this will be in the newspaper for probably how many days? Mm -hmm. We're done for one week. Mm -hmm. And after that, it will go with the to the limelight, it will mm. be out of the limelight. Out of the limelight, but, yeah. Uh, and then the but you will be make sure. <laughs> but this is, this, this, is, uh, this is what is sure about it. Yeah. Although it will be out of the lim limelight from the newspaper and the daily broadcast of the t TV and the newspaper, you will be assured that there is a particular unit mm -hmm. who were mon actively monitoring these cases from the investigation to the prosecution all of these trials, conviction, even these cases are dismissed, someone is reviewing all of these cases, what mm -hmm. is the reason are this, why it was dismissed, mm -hmm. uh, what are the things can be done to the cases in order to, uh, to solve it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be assured that there is a unit who will put every, every uh, particularly our own personnel, if they were involved under restricted mm -hmm custody and mm. make all of this coordination between the court, the prosecutors, and right. so that's so, because that's how our work up. So you, you'd give yourself a passing grade? you give Task Force USIG a, a passing grade or even a, a good grade? Uh, yeah. uh, yes, of course. Yes. We've been here since uh, 2006. Okay, yeah. all right. Ed, uh, your thoughts? Well, I, I would rather grade the entirety. Yeah, the entirety, of, not, of just, the not, not just USIG, yes, because USIG is uh, actually yeah. a very small part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And to be fair to them, you know, Theirs is not the entire the burden in its entirety. Mm. Um, in its entirety, if you ask me, government's uh, ability uh, and willingness to protect press freedom, um, it's still a failure. It's still a failure. Okay. It's still a failure. We have a free press not because of the government, but mm. because the public wants it. Mm -hmm. uh, despite the, mm. the despite you might say government. Mm -hmm. That's right. Despite okay now. Um, is, do you think, in your in your mind, do you think that the media is successful in policing its its own rank? 
ranks? Um, that's an interesting question. Yeah. I would say that we would need to have a lot more work done. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to do that. So uh, you, you give yourself a, a failing mark as well? <laughs> um, to be fair to everybody else, yeah. I, I think that uh, if we're not failing, we're... We're somewhere in the middle, yeah. Somewhere in the somewhere middle, in the middle perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Barely uh, passing or something. Kasi, yeah. you know, there are a lot of things that we need to do, and we've been trying to do it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But we'll need to change a lot of things and a lot of mindsets mm -hmm. along the way. Oh, okay. As far as media is concerned, mm -hmm. you have a lot of media groups that are working on this. NUJP, FFFJ, CMFR, PCIJ. Yeah. We do training for reporters in the provinces, and a lot of these issues we talk about. Mm. Sometimes you'd be amazed at the things you hear. Yeah. Right. Now, the Colonel, do you think that part, the reason for this media killings is also obviously the fault of media itself? you think they... they have some responsibility to this. I know it's going to be very difficult for them to, to for anyone to concede that, considering that one of them, uh, or let's say several of them, have, have been have been killed and murdered. No, but do you think that they bear a certain amount of responsibility to what's happening to them uh, being attacked? Uh, in, uh, in some sense, yeah, uh, because uh, we monitored some of those cases that uh, uh, were really. I mean, can be considered as uh, work-related because of some other reason, and that is mm. the reason why they were killed. Mm. Not because but unfortunately, of you have to unfortunately you have to balance yeah, that. Yeah, that, but still, that, this the freedom of still the press, being, yeah. being able to express yourself, and but, uh, and also, uh, I guess, call it, calling some uh, calling trouble your way. Yes. Uh, you know, so, well, sometimes, yeah. mo sa probinsya nagahamunan sa ere. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, parang so, oh. duelo. Parang, oh. uh, so sometimes that's that's alarming. Yeah, it's alarming. But, but it's it's alarming in the provinces. But it's mm. alarming because you also see it here in Manila, and mm. people mm. in the provinces would also copy that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, but but having said that, th that of course aggravates everything. Right. Aggravate, mm -hmm. Aggravates uh, and, and, yeah. and enforces the culture of impunity and all that. Mm. Uh, but having said that, in uh, your mind, the media person should not be engaging. Yes, uh, yes. The, in the, the, in the, the end, person, you have yeah. to be responsible about yes, how you yes. you handle the news and right. how you handle mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, exactly. um, but having said that. Um, there's still no reason for you to be killed. No matter how terrible you are as a reporter, no matter how bad your writing is, no matter how, how, how much you should go back to college or maybe high mm. school and yeah. learn uh, the basics of grammar, yeah. in the end, you don't get killed for okay. bad grammar or bad right, exactly. or unprofessionalism. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. no, okay. Okay, the ultimate uh, goal of, of the show and the discussion, of course, is to inform the public. And so uh, well, I will ask you, Ed and uh, Colonel, to, to give your, your final words in this question, uh, for those who just, just tuned in, the question is, is the government doing enough uh, to protect our journalists? So your final words, Colonel. Yes, uh, I'm the part of uh, the Philippine National Police. So of course, uh, uh, we're, we're doing our, our best to solve all, each and every case of killing, particularly uh, these uh, media practitioners, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. we give special focus mm -hmm. on each and every cases. We are continually uh, uh, improving our investigative uh, uh, policies, uh, procedures, equipment, and uh, so forth and so on in order to give justice to the family of the victims. All right. Thank you very much, Colonel. And Ed, your final words. Uh, is the government uh, protecting you enough? Well, um, we would like to see significant improvements in a lot of aspects, uh, from mm. the legal, logistical, to the political mm. aspects of it. And obviously, it's not, uh, it's not working the way it should. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we may again be the freest press in Asia, but they're also free to kill us, mm -hmm. as it turns out. Yeah, so, and that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. All right, thank you very much. So thank you very much, Ed. Thank you, Colonel. And so thanks to our guest, uh, Colonel uh, Henry Libai and uh, Ed Lingao. Thank you so much for joining us, thank you. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, now let's see the results of our online poll. Our question, is the government fulfilling its mandate of protecting journalists? Those who answered yes, uh, the government is doing enough, 30%. Those who answered no, 70%. And that's our opposing views for tonight. Tune in again next week for another bold and engaging discussion on today's most relevant issues. I'm Rod Pumuseno. Good night and God bless.